And the first garden trend I'm going to talk about is growing food indoors. Now, we all know about the grow your own food movement for about the past 10 years. It's really revolutionized how, how we garden. And, you know, back in, 19, in 1943, 40% of all food eaten in the U.S. and Canada, of all fresh produce, was grown in people's backyards. Because it was patriotic. Um, you know, the Allies were at war, and the Victory Gardens um, were very popular, and it was patriotic to grow your own food. And it, it was declining ever since for a while. In the 80s and 90s, it fell off a cliff, because gardening became about flowers. It became about aesthetics and beauty. And everyone lined up their front flower beds with geraniums and marigolds, and everyone put these things in all their front beds, and you drive down the street, and every, every house looked the same. Every house had the same plants, because there were about five different types of bedding plants you had access to. Um, now, post-millennia, things are really shifting back to growing your own food. And now it's about growing your own food indoors. And why grow your, food, why grow your own food indoors? Uh, there's a number of reasons. First off, it's younger people are doing it more than ever before. 37% of millennials last year grow some food indoors. 28% of boomers. Millennials are redefining gardening. The fastest growing demographic of new gardeners uh, in North America right now are millennial men. Men in their 20s. I know, yet, you know, zero to anything is considered a big jump. But, um, you know, young people are coming in, they're redefining gardening, they're doing what young people do best. They're looking at how things have always been done, and they're changing them in their own image. So hydroponics is becoming very popular. I was going to call this page hydroponics, not just for pot growers anymore. Um, that's why the millennials are doing it. <laughs> but with hydroponics, the thing about that is, when you plant seeds in the soil, there's a lot of things gifted to you. There's a lot of micronutrients in the soil, there's conductivity, there's pH, there's a lot of things that we take for granted that all contribute to the magic of the plant growing. In hydroponics, there is no soil. You're growing in water or charcoal or some other soilless medium, and so we have to, we have to add all those things. And so the science of it has made it really prohibitive for, for it to really spread mainstream. Now that's changing with different kits, things like that, hydroponics, aquaponics, vertical gardening, all different ways of growing food indoors, these are becoming really popular in the Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things is, if I have a, a pot with a tomato plant in it, and I have it on my phone, and my phone will beep and notify me when that plant needs water. That's where it begins. Or when it needs fertilizer. And now you can buy entire kits. You, two, four, six thousand dollars online. You can buy whole kits that you can put in your, in your kitchen and literally you put the tomato seed in the slot and the next time you touch it is when you harvest the tomatoes because it waters it, it fertilizes it, it does everything for you and it notifies you when it's doing it. So you can be sitting on the LRT and the person next to you can be growing vegetables for that night's salad. And it kind of sounds like science fiction, but, um, you know, it's getting more popular and economy of scale is popularizing the stuff very quickly. So within five, ten years, I guarantee it will be very common for people to have their house plants and their indoor, indoor um, potted plants monitored on their phones. We have a long winter and I hope it's over. Um, and our winter is dark, it's cold, and all we want to do is reach for the carbs, right? All we want to do is sit in the couch, get the simple carbs going, white bread, and oftentimes we don't get the nutrients we need. When you grow food ourselves indoors, we're cheating winter of its prize. We're getting the nutrients we need because the, the food we grow ourselves has so many more nutrients. You know the tomatoes you go and buy at uh, Safeway in January? Those kind of pink, beigey, hard things that you could really hurt someone with, those things. I'll tell you the story of those tomatoes. The story of those tomatoes is about 10 days before you buy it, that is plucked by a machine off uh, vines in Peru, Argentina, Mexico, what have you. 
it's grown to be a special variety with an extremely thick skin. So you could throw this thing down a mountain, it wouldn't bruise, because of all the abuse it takes packing. And then on the way up to the store, they gas it with ethylene gas in order to, in order to make it blush, to turn red. Problem there is, fruits and vegetables, all their nutrients and all their vitamins and all the really wonderful stuff go in at the end. They go in during the, the last part of the ripening process. So that tomato isn't getting into lycopene, it's not getting in the vitamin A, it's not getting any of the really great stuff, the cancer fighting, et cetera, that tomatoes get because, because of that process. When you grow it yourself, it's all there. So you're gonna get so many more nutrients when you grow things yourself. So grow light, very important. You don't need one now, but in January when it's dark at three, then um, you know, grow lights are really important, especially if you're growing things like basil, salad greens, et cetera. And our air gets very dry. Um, and so a spray bottle is, is very important. <laughs>